So every month we ask an assembler <clears throat> to share something about how they're, how they're doing their best. Uh, today we have a chance to hear from someone who is always around to lend a helping hand. When we wanted a cocktail hour for winter solstice, he provided a bar and bartended himself. When we realized the night before the Pride celebration that we wouldn't be able to get the marching banners from Sunday Assembly San Diego, he drove all night to San Diego to pick them up after working the booth for a full shift. He also provided the spread that uh, you will enjoy after the assembly today. Uh, doing the best, please welcome Sean Shi. Hi. So uh, before I start, I just want to let you know, if I start laughing, it's because I started preparing this while I'm in my restroom looking at myself in the mirror naked, jump, <laughs> doing, doing jumping jacks. So in my brain, I'm looking at you doing jumping jacks naked. <laughs> but um, to get started, I think we have a lot of people that read books here, I'm sure. Uh, have you ever re read a book where like, you get so enthralled by the story in front of you that you're just like, immersed in that world and you think yourself as part of that world? For me, I think of my life as a story in a book that I'm both reading and unfolding in front of me as well as something I'm writing. Now, a good book often has great, uh, very interesting characters. And what makes a character interesting are his or her quirks. I don't think of myself as a very interesting person, but I do have my quirks. One of those quirks that I'm aware of every single day is that I choose to sleep in a sleeping bag on the floor. Why do I do that? One of the reasons is because in college, every year I moved, and I didn't graduate early. I choose to stay one, one year longer. But beyond that, I moved eight times in Los Angeles, three times in Miami. I moved to Atlanta, I even lived in the Navajo Nation. And, you know, just think of myself, well, I, I gotta start being a minimalist, right? I, if I move so often, I want to move as little as possible. So if I don't have a bit, that makes it easier for me. But another reason is because I live half a block away from Skid Row. And every time I, I go to sleep, I think about them half a block away from me. Now compared to them, I think I have a great life. but. Every night when I slip into my sleeping bag, it reminds me that everything that I have can go away in that instant. And I could end up just like the people half a block away from me, or even worse. A good book will work in the happiness and the successes that the character encounters. For me, I think I have my successes. In a previous uh, career, over the course of 10 years, I started from a customer service rep and became the president of that company running the $114 million business, and all the successes along the way. Beyond that, what makes me happy is taking photographs. Now, every time I come to assembly, I look at Russ and say, oh man, he must be having a blast. <laughs> <laughs> because I get this over, like, overwhelming joy when I take a photograph, and I get to work on it, you know, the cropping, the filters, and, and that kind of thing. And, you know, it, it's like, what Henri cartier bresson said, and he says, taking a photograph is easy, it's just a click. But that click is so meaningful. You can be the only person that have captured those people in that space, at that moment, and from that particular perspective, and that's invaluable, right? I mean, just look at last week, you know, without certain images that were captured, what would happen or not happen, right? I think um, a good book, Sometimes we'll work in the sadness, uh, the negative part. You know, we often think about sadness and depressive things in our life as negative and we don't want to touch that. But you know if you read books, a lot of them are touching because they're t talking about something depressing, something sad, and it touches you in your heart. For me, one of those was when I was in a hotel room in Paris one night, and my brother in Los Angeles called me and let me know that my grandmother, who was, I was close to, had passed away that evening. Um, I realized that I didn't have a chance to say goodbye, and I felt like, oh, um, very sad. And so I, I sat by the window looking at the City of Light and thinking about how she used to live 
and she would knit uh, little boots or sweaters for kids sitting at window and singing. Another uh, thing that comes to mind is when I found out the moment that my wife at the time was having an affair. And man, that, that heartache that you felt, uh, it's not something that I would wish on anybody to experience. But those are the experiences that over time you look back and it gets easier. And it becomes something that's unique and interesting in your life. I think also uh, a book uh, also shares with you lessons and morals. And for me, one of those lessons that I constantly learn is that life is just full of the unexpected. And so for me, I try not to have any expectations on whatever I do. You know, you, all you can do is prepare the best you can and just let life happen. Let it happen for you. Um, because worrying about things isn't going to help anything. Um, I think uh, if you take that attitude, anything positive that happens is just a serendipity, right? And so, you know, anything little positive that does happen, it becomes so much better for you. Lastly, I hope everybody will do your best to write your book because you only have one chance at it. Um, hopefully, you take time to go back and appreciate what you've gone through, no matter what you've been through, because it's unique, it's interesting. And I hope we all get a chance to share and listen to your individual stories. But most importantly, make sure you remember that we all have no idea when we're writing our last page. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.